Hey guys, today I am going to show you how you can control Native Instruments Tractor from your iPad. Now the overall procedure in carrying this out is fairly simple. First, you obviously need a copy of Native Instruments Tractor Pro on your computer. I'm using Tractor Pro 2. Uh, I believe, however, this would work with Tractor Duo. Um, I haven't tried it with it, but I'm using Tractor Pro. So, once you have that on your computer, you need to go and download an app on your iPad called... Let me set this into manual focus. See on here. An app called Touch OSC. It's available on the App Store. It's around four quid, I believe. That's at the time of uh, shooting this video anyway. So once you've got that, fire it up. And then on the iPad itself, you will be greeted with this screen. Now what you want to do is you see the layout column here. I'll zoom in a bit for you. There you go. So you have layout, you go in here and you want to select uh, the jog on. Um, <laughs> I know it sounds funny but jog on. Um, that is the map that you want to select. And uh, you can also do this on the iPhone as well. Uh, Touch OSC, when you buy it, works for both iPhone and iPad. Uh, although if you want to use this as an actual controller, um, I would recommend you use the iPad version of it. However, the iPhone version is good if you want to, for example, control EQ, etc, etc. Now what you need to do is head over to hexler.net forward slash software forward slash touch OSC. I'll put the link below in the description. Um, so once you'll, you'll see this page obviously uh, showcasing touch OSC. Now what you're going to want to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom and you will see touch OSC bridge here. Uh, there is an OS X and a Windows version of the program, so uh, if you're using either of those, then you are good to go. I don't actually think Tractor works in Linux anyway, so um, you're not really going to have any luck there unless you do it through Wine. But uh, anyway, so I'll go ahead and download this. Unzip the file. I'll zoom out a bit so you can see it happening. Unzip the file. Then I have here Touch OSC Bridge. Uh, it's going to ask you to do that. Um, and as well, if you have got Gatekeeper on OS X Mountain Lion, you're going to want to um, set it to enable all programs, obviously. Uh, otherwise, this will not run. Uh, now, you may notice here, once I've just done that, a new icon has appeared up in my menu bar. You can see it there. It is the B. Right, so after you've got Touch OSC Bridge installed, so you can see there's the B icon up there in the menu bar, and what you're going to want to do is head over again to back to your browser to hexlo.net forward slash docs forward slash touch OSC, that's one word, dash setup, or hyphen setup, hyphen tractor. And that will take you to this page. Again, I'll put the links below so you don't need to worry about that. Um, that will take you to this page. There's me, hello. Um, what it does is it tells Tractor um, what the MIDI signals are mapped to as in controls wise, i.e. for example, um, what MIDI signal am I looking for to move the pitch fader, uh, not the pitch, to move the uh, fader or to change the low EQ. Uh, the TSI is what uh, well tells Tractor what to translate the MIDI into essentially. Um, and you will need this to be able to use Touch OSC and the jog on TSI the jog on map even. So if I hit download there and unzip the zip, there we go. Now it's in my downloads folder. So what I'm going to do is go back into Tractor, go up here, go make it a bit clearer for you. Hit add here, import. Uh, now it will take you into downloads, um, date modified, jog on to uh, Oh, it's in a folder, isn't it? Yeah, jogon.tsi, open. And you will see we have got all of these controls that are already pre-mapped for us. Uh, one thing I will mention at this point is Touch OSC is highly customizable. Uh, it's not just designed to uh, be using the inbuilt presets. There are all loads of different hundreds of thousands of combinations you can do with this. Uh, they also have a program on, Hex on Hexler, have a program called Touch OSC Editor. So if you want to get in, make your own uh, map, touch OSC maps for the iPad and the iPhone, you can go ahead and do that. Um, 
And I think if you have a hunt around the internet as well, you might find even better ones than the inbuilt jog on um, layout. So have a, have a look across the internet. Um, right, so once you've done that, what you need to do is you need to change the import and the out port of MIDI because at the moment it doesn't know where the, it's get, gonna get the MIDI signal from because normally you have a USB controller um, whereas this is coming over Wi-Fi and it needs to translate, uh, well it needs to find out where the MIDI signal is coming from so what you need to do is simply tap here for the import, touch OSC bridge and you need to do the same for the out port, touch OSC bridge right now once you're done with that you can simply just close so what you're going to want to do is actually go into the, we well, have the settings window open here. I will zoom in a bit so you can see. Uh, there we go. Now what you're going to need to do is tap on MIDI bridge. And it's found one here, found host one, Jamie's MacBook Pro. That's the computer I was using, funnily enough. Tap that. And uh, we are connected. So, tap done. And it is in landscape orientation. And that is actually as simple as it was to connect the two devices. So now what we can do here, I've got the iPad, I have tracked it. We can simply just use all of the controls on here. You should hopefully, oop, maybe I'm not tapping it right. You should hopefully be able to see that fader moving there. I'm controlling that. And I have four decks there. You may be like, oh, there's only two decks there. Well, what you need to do is you've got up here, deck C and D. Go in there and have all of the controls to the other two decks. Uh, now this is assuming that you are using the other two decks as either remix decks or sample decks, um, which will work perfectly fine with them. So that's that's basically how it works as such. And you can use this as a normal controller, um, as such really, uh, at the, in principle anyway. Um, you can control all of the normal functions and that. Uh, however, some things are mapped quite strangely I've noticed. For example, these two faders either side, the pitch faders normally they are, um, is mapped to filter. You might be able to see that is actually mapped to filter. It's just a bit odd considering uh, what uh, normally they would be mapped to. But so nevertheless that is how you connect Touch OSC on the iPad or iPhone to Tractor. Uh, I did only show the iPad in this video, however, connecting the iPhone basically exactly the same as this. Uh, and if you actually head over to Hexlo's website, they have more uh, controllers. And it's not just Tractor, you can use Touch OSC to control. Uh, you can use any major digital audio workstation. It will control, for example, Ableton, Logic. I believe they have a dedicated Logic map on there, as such they do for Native Instruments Tractor. Um, and one thing I would also point out with this is it is a really, really good idea for a backup controller. Now normally, I, when I'm out, the Native Instruments Tractor Control, I probably can't see it there just because it's blocking out all the light, never mind. Um, that is my main controller. However, it is really not a bad idea at all to have an extra or backup controller on the go. And because a lot of people tend to, tend to carry their iPad around with them anyway, um, or some even actually use it for gigs, it's a really, really good backup controller. Obviously, I would not run a whole, um, normally anyway, if I was very desperate, I would maybe, uh, wouldn't run a whole um, normal DJ setup off of an iPad. Um, however, as a backup controller, in case mine broke um, or in mid-gig failed on me, for example, it's uh, a lot easier than having to use the keyboard and trackpad um, or a mouse as such. And uh, it's multi-touch as well, which means you can do multiple things at once on it. I'll for show, show you that again, for example. Um, you can control multiple buttons on it at once, which is really, really handy. Especially uh, if you need to do a few things at the same time, for example, start two songs or stop two songs, cue something in while changing the pitch. Um, it makes life a lot easier. Um, and as well as a backup controller, you could use it as an additional controller. There are a load of different maps on here um, that are configured by default. As I said, you, do, you can obviously go about it and do it your own way as well. Um, but you can go through and get all sorts of maps on here as well. Um, like we've got logic pad which is what uh, you use for logic or mixed pad logic pad which is what you use for uh, logic you can maybe see here it's uh, 
<laughs> fairly similar to the Logic Mixer if you've ever used it. Um, but as I said, many, many possibilities with this and for four quid it is a really, really good buy and it basically costs you nothing in the long run because uh, obviously it gives you assurance that when you're at a gig uh, you can, I suppose, have a backup. Uh, one final point I'll mention before I conclude the video is that you do need to use a Wi-Fi network to configure this. Uh, however, if you are at a gig and you want to use it, uh, there's no problem. All you really need to do is go up here to Wi-Fi or a equivalent of Windows. I'm just showing you the Mac here and just create a Wi-Fi network um, and join the iPad to it. You might not have internet on the iPad, unfortunately, uh, but you just join, simply join, uh, connect that up and join the iPad to the network and um, yeah, it will work. So that's basically a very simple setup. Uh, it may seem complicated in the long run, but <laughs> it will, will help you at gigs and um, hopefully this will be of use to you. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in future videos.